healthy life, how to sell your wares and services to those who are all about healthier alternatives. Hofstra University's Distinguished Professor of Business, Dr. Joel Evans, has the info to help you do it right. It's the focus of today's In the Spotlight. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Evans. Thank you. All right, so today we're talking about healthy living. What does a small business owner or entrepreneur need to know about these kinds of trends? If you talk about food versus lifestyle types of things, from a food perspective, they need to learn to have more non-GMO based food, more organic food, healthy food, which they could actually dominate that segment, the local, the local uh, vegetable or fruit store, so they've got to change the mix, which has been evolving. Even supermarkets now have, you know, organic sections and everything else, so they could do that. But and doesn't that cost extra money? How is the small business owner supposed to compete against the whole foods of the world on that? This is actually one of the business practices that has a positive result, that people who are interested in getting healthier food are not as price conscious, so they're not tied into, I've got to get the you know, the lowest price uh, spinach, they want the spinach that they, they're, they're much more likely to look at the ingredients on the package uh, and, and be willing to pay for what they believe is a healthier product. And that's across the board. Uh, so it's something that uh, every type of store that sells healthier oriented pr uh, products uh, is into. Whole food, their prices are not the lowest ones around by any stretch. Uh, they've had some price pressures, but they are selling a healthy lifestyle. Now, Trader Joe's isn't the cheapest. They're selling a healthy lifestyle. Now on Long Island, what do I need to know about healthy living and how this would factor into my decisions about what I'm selling? First of all, we need to know that Long Island is aging. Roughly one-sixth of the population is age 65 and older. Secondly, we need to know that particularly among baby boomers, uh, people born between 1946 and 64, and younger people, that a healthy lifestyle is more important to them than it was in the past, so they're more likely from a food perspective, but also a lifestyle perspective to be doing different things. So one of the things I've observed over the last three or four years on Long Island is the number of different types of gyms that have come out here. We've had a tremendous uh, influx of uh, gyms for people to, to participate in of different types. We've seen increases in the number of yoga studios where people can do uh, low impact uh, activities. So there have been a lot of changes from that perspective. From the perspective of manufacturers, there's a lot more emphasis now for people who aren't necessarily losing weight, and we still on Long Island have a population that is more overweight than it should be, but we see relaxed fit styles really becoming extremely popular now. So that almost every brand that you could think of, of, of popular clothing, has a stretch version of it where people can guilt-free feel like they look better and feel healthier. We see all these, these shirts that can flatten you out. There are all types of devices that are being done. So I think it's both from a food perspective and a lifestyle perspective that there are tremendous opportunities uh, on Long Island and for smaller uh, firms. And it's, and it's something where they have to be less price conscious. It, again, it comes down to service. Besides service, what's the difference between the person who's going to succeed and the one who is not? The one that's committed to that lifestyle change, the one that really believes that organic food and non-GMO food is good for people, not someone who's just doing it because they figure they could make a buck. So it really has to be ingrained in the store owner that it's something that they believe in that's really good. Same thing with the gyms, that you have to be uh, an evangelist to some extent, and that's what gets people back. And that's how you're talking up new products that are coming out, whether they be vegetables or whether they be uh, fruit products, that you really have to believe in. What about the flip side of the argument? Uh, let's say I want to be decadent. I want the, uh, the extravagant dessert that has a lot of calories, but I'm going to feel like I got something really special, homemade really delicious. Talk to me about that segment of the market. Well, this is why if you can, you want to try to cater to multiple segments. That's why the small food and vegetable store doesn't stop carrying everything that's not um, 
made with GMO, that's made with GMO. But a perfect example of this segmentation stuff is Cheesecake Factory, which got really hammered when the law went into effect for chains having to post calories. So what they did immediately is they came up with a 500 calorie and under uh, menu for people, uh, kept their regular menu, and then also had a couple of the cheesecakes, which are lower calorie. So that means you could have two people sitting at a, pa at a table. One is gorging themselves on all the stuff that's 1,500 calories, and the other one having something that, that's 500. So part of it is 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 giving uh, the choice to people and recognizing that there's more than, than one customer segment that's out there.